Welcome to Real Filmmaking, my name is Corey, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to get good audio in your video and film. Hey, I'm gonna interrupt myself right here just to say that audio is literally 50% of video. If you don't have good audio in your films and your videos, people can't understand what you're saying or your character, they're just gonna be like, nope, I'm out of here, I'm done. So you gotta get that good crispy audio in your videos. So straight out the gate, I'll just say, don't use the onboard microphone on your camera. The audio quality is terrible. It sounds really tinny. The noise floor is really high. It's not gonna sound good. It sounds something like this. So as you can probably tell, the audio does not sound great. I had to boost it a ton to match the level of the microphone I was using, and it just, it doesn't sound good. It feels less full, it's really tinny, the noise floor is hot. So just whatever you do, avoid using the onboard microphone in your camera. So we don't wanna use the onboard microphone in our cameras. They just sound terrible, they're not designed to capture good audio. So we need to use a device that was designed to capture good audio, and that's an external microphone. So the first microphone category we're gonna talk about is the shotgun microphone. This microphone by far is the most common, whether you're doing YouTube setups, studio stuff, uh, interviews, film sets, you generally will see this microphone boomed up on a mic stand or somebody will actually have a boom pole to record the audio. And shotgun microphones are very straightforward. I mean, they do what they sound like. So they're shotguns, so they're very directional. So whatever you point the microphone at, it will reject sound coming in from the sides and it will pick up sound based on whatever it's pointing at. This is the setup that I use. I actually have the microphone just right outside the frame here. You can see I just have it boomed up on a mic stand right beside me and you're good to go. Shotgun microphones are also very helpful. If you're doing something like a vlog or you're talking to camera like this, you can turn around, you can just put the microphone on top of your camera right here and you get some pretty good audio from it. The next type of microphone actually has been gaining a lot of popularity here on YouTube and that is the wireless mic system. So for a wireless mic setup, you have a receiver and you have a transmitter. You plug one into your camera and then you put one on and a lot of them have built-in microphones now or you run a lav mic into it and then you can get good wireless audio sent straight to your camera. The biggest positive for wireless audio is that it's wireless. You know, you don't have a ton of cables. You need one cable to run it into your camera and you're good to go. So this works really well if you're doing stuff like behind the scenes footage, you're trying to grab a quick interview with somebody, maybe you're out vlogging. It's really easy, like I said, most of these receivers now and transmitters, they have mics built into them. So you can run a lav mic into it if you wanna get higher quality, but just if you're doing something that's really run and gun, these are really easy to set up. And again, they're going to give you substantially better audio than just using the audio out of your camera. The next microphone type is a condenser microphone. Now, as you can see, it's a lot different from a wireless mic or a shotgun mic. It's a lot bigger. And because of that, the pickup pattern is a lot different and it picks up more audio all around it as opposed to very directional like the shotgun microphone. And because of that, you just get more natural, full sounding audio. Condenser microphones tend to be really popular for podcasters, you know, like the audio is very pleasing to listen to. In the YouTube space, you see it a lot with uh, video podcasting, kind of in tech channels, you see a lot too. And a couple things with this microphone, it works really well, but as you can see, you kind of need to plan your shots around using a condenser microphone because you need to be fairly close to it to get the best audio signal. You know, some people really don't like having things like microphones and stands in their shots, so it's all gonna come down to personal preference. Another thing to note about these types of microphones is they need to be powered either by an external recorder or uh, an audio interface. And so like when I use mine, I actually run it into my computer. You can see back there into my editing software and it captures the audio and then I can sync it later in post with the video. But again, it's just a couple more extra steps that affect post-production. The next big tip is to get your microphone as close as possible. Now with some of these microphone types like I talked about, like wireless mics and condenser mics, that's not really an issue because you either have to be close or the microphone is naturally close because you're wearing it, you've got a lav mic, whatever. But if you're using boom mics in particular, try to get them as close to the talent as possible. So for example, in this studio shot that I have right here, I actually have the microphone like just slightly out of frame. So you can see it right there. It helps me to get the optimal audio quality because it's probably less than like maybe a foot from me. And so you're gonna get really clean, crisp audio, even regardless if you're using a cheaper microphone. And if you're ever in a scene where you can't boom a microphone over your talent, you can always hide one someplace. 
Aha. The next big thing that's going to affect you getting really good audio in your videos is to put your camera into manual mode in terms of controlling your camera's audio. Most cameras have some place where you can go in and switch the auto function into a manual mode and then even allow you to choose how much the camera amplifies the microphone. And so what I tend to do is to go into the manual audio settings and turn down the camera's preamp to usually as low as you can or slightly above that. That way, most of the amplification is being processed by the microphone. And then if you need to up it in post-production, you have a lot of room to do that without all the camera preamp noise. Some cameras display like the audio peaking level so you can see like what level you're at. A good rule of thumb is I try to shoot from anywhere between negative 12 dB to negative 6 dB. So the last tip that I have to get better audio in your videos and films is to record your audio into an external recorder. These external recorders are designed to capture audio and process it in a much higher quality than running directly into your camera. On an external recorder, you usually have options for like what bit depth you want to record at, different settings to deal with like a limiter, compression, along with all the ability to just increase stuff with post-production. Audio recorders also give you the ability to hook up more professional microphones to them, like condenser microphones and higher end shotgun microphones that require an XLR connection, usually because they need phantom power. Along with external recorders, I also want to mention audio interfaces real quick. These usually tend to be more stationary. You see them with like a desktop setup, like somebody who's an audio engineer. They come in lots of different sizes, but the main benefit to having an audio interface is you can record lots of things into it, not just microphones for speech, but you know, you can also record instruments, plug a lot of different things into it. So those are some quick tips to help you get better audio in your videos. Hopefully you found this helpful or interesting. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to Real Filmmaking for more content coming about filmmaking, cameras, creative process, all that goodness. And until next time, keep making movies and watching movies, and I'll see you on Real Filmmaking.